Now, let's turn this into a right triangle. The hypotenuse of the right triangle is R. And this is X and Y. And here we have the angle theta. Sine theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So it's Y divided by R. Now keep in mind, when dealing with a unit circle, R is 1. So therefore, the equation becomes sine theta is equal to y. But when you're not dealing with a unit circle, sine theta is actually y over r. It's equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine theta, according to uh, Sokotoa, cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. The adjacent side is x, hypotenuse is r. Tangent theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side in TOA. So it's y divided by x. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so if sine is y over r, cosecant is r over y. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that's r over x. And cotangent is x divided by y. So those are some values that you need to know. Now let's review this sign of the trigonometric functions. So here we have quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. So if you recall, sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. Sine is associated with the y value. y is positive above the x-axis. Sine is negative in quadrants 3 and 4. Cosine is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. X is positive on the right side. X is negative on the left, so cosine is negative on quadrants 2 and 3. Tangent, which is y over x, sine over cosine. Tangent is positive in quadrants 1 and 3. Tangent is negative in 2 and 4. So these are some things that you want to commit to memory. So in quadrant 1, everything is positive. In quadrant 2, sine is positive. In quadrant 3, tangent is positive. In quadrant 4, cosine is positive. Perhaps you heard of the expression, all students take calculus. All means that in quadrant 1, all signs, sine, cosine, and tangent, all of them are positive. Students, sine is positive. As for students, take T is positive. Calculus. C is positive in quadrant 4. So all students take calculus. Something that you may find useful. Now let's say we're given a point P, which is negative 5, comma 12, and it's on the terminal side of theta. Using this, find the values of the six trigonometric functions. So if you're given a point, what you want to do is plot the point and also make a triangle at the same time. So x is negative 5. That means we got to travel 5 units to the left. y is positive, so you have to travel up 12 units. And then draw the hypotenuse, which is r. So we know this is the 5, 12, 13 triangle. And here is the angle uh, theta. That's the reference angle, by the way. The actual angle is here relative to the positive x-axis. Now, let's go ahead and find sine theta. We need to find all six trigonometric functions. So sine theta, which is y over r, also its opposite, divided by hypotenuse, where hypotenuse is r, sine theta is going to be positive 12 over 13. Cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So it's negative 5 over 13. Tangent theta is equal to opposite divided by adjacent. So that's going to be 12 over negative 5. Now once you have these three, you could find cosecant. You just got to uh, flip this fraction. So cosecant is going to be 13 over 12. Secant is the reciprocal of this one. So that's uh, negative 13 over 5. 
and cotangent is the reciprocal of this value, so that's negative 5 over 12. And so that's how you could find the six trigonometric functions if you're given the point. Let's try another problem. So let's say if we're given the point negative 8, negative 15, find the value of the six trigonometric functions. So let's plot it. Let's travel 8 units to the left and down 15 units because it's negative 15. X is negative in quadrants 2 and 3, but Y is negative in 3 and 4. So the triangle has to be in quadrant 3. Now this is the 8, 15, 17 triangle. And here's the angle theta between the terminal side and the x-axis. So sine theta is going to be opposite, which is negative 15, divided by the hypotenuse. And negative 8 is the adjacent side relative to theta. So sine theta is negative 15 over 17. Cosine theta, according to Sokotoa, is going to be adjacent, which is negative 8, divided by the hypotenuse. And tangent theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So the two negative sides will cancel, and we're just going to get 15 over 8. So keep in mind, in quadrant 3, tangent is positive, but sine and cosine are negative. Cosecant, to find that, all we need to do is flip this value. So cosecant is going to be 17 over 15, but with a negative sign. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so we just got to flip this one. So it's negative 17 over 8. And finally, cotangent, which is 1 over tangent, that's going to be 8 over 15. And so that's it for this example. Let's try one more problem. So let's say we have the point positive 2, negative 4. So pause the video and work on this one. So let's begin by plotting the point. So x is positive 2, so we got to go 2 units towards the right. y is negative 4, so we have to go down 4 units. Now this is not a special triangle, so we need to use the Pythagorean theorem in order to find r, the hypotenuse. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. A is 2 in this example, B is negative 4, and let's find C. The hypotenuse is always positive, by the way. 2 squared is 4, negative 4 squared is positive 16, and 4 plus 16 is 20. So we've got to take the square root of both sides, and 20 we can write it as 4 times 5. And the square root of 4 is 2. So the hypotenuse is 2 square root 5. Now that we have the hypotenuse, we could find everything else. So 2 is on the adjacent side relative to theta, negative 4 is on the opposite side, and 2 square root 5 is the hypotenuse. Sine theta, which is uh, y divided by r, is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So it's negative 4 divided by 2 square root 5, which reduces to negative 2 over square root 5. And if we rationalize it by multiplying the top and bottom by square root 5, it becomes negative 2 square root 5 over 5. So that's the value for sine theta. Cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side, which is 2, divided by the hypotenuse. So that simplifies to 1 over square root 5, because these cancel. And then if we rationalize it, it becomes square root 5 over 5. So that's the value of cosine. Next, we have tangent, which is opposite divided by adjacent. So that's negative 2. Now let's find the value of cosecant. Cosecant is 1 over sine. But what you want to do is you want to flip this portion of sine before you rationalize it. So cosecant is going to be negative square root 5 over 2. And now for secant, we want to flip this portion before we rationalize it. So if cosine is 1 over square root 5, secant is square root 5 over 1. Or simply, 
just square root 5. So that's the value of secant. And here's the uh, value for cosecant. Now, tangent is negative 2. So cotangent is going to be negative 1 over 2. You just got to flip it. And so that's it for this example.